Hello everyone! Today I will be once more featuring North Carolina. Uh, the matchmaking is tier 8. Now, I did consider making this a super unicum commentary where I go into extreme depth, but I did not think it had quite enough tactical variety to justify making a bit like that, but I will try to be a bit more detailed since I've already covered a lot how the NC plays. So I will try to be a bit more in, uh, in detail on how to maximize the strengths you get out of the ship. Now first of all, um, the obvious reaction when you get tier 8, when, you get, when you're top tier, the obvious reaction is of course, this is going to be easy, or this is going to be, well this is going to be a lot easier than it usually would. But that's kind of the wrong attitude to take in the sense that uh, being the top tier actually put a, puts a lot higher expectations on you. If you're the tier 6 in a tier 8 matchmaking game, like for example my Farragut, Farragut game, if I die, if I kill one guy and die, or even if I get killed, it's really not the end of the world because, well, you can't really expect that much more from a, the poor low tier dude. However, if you go into a game like this as the top tier, uh, there are high expectations. You need to perform. You That obviously automatically puts you kind of into the carry role. You need to put forth a, a performance that is at least better than every other lower tier on your team. At least. So there are some requirements and you can't just go slack off because, well, I'm the top tier. I don't really need to do too much. In fact, you need to do a lot more than anyone else because, well, you got favored by matchmaking and the team relies on you very heavily. First things first, battleships always try to go for a central position. In this case, I push straight between A and B. If you look at the minimap, you can see that white circle. That's my firing arcs, so or how far I can fire. So you can see when I go to a central position here, my firing arcs pretty much cover the entire map. There is nowhere on the map that I cannot shoot. And this is excellent. You don't need to push too far in your battleships. There's no reason to push into the cap. There's no reason to push past the caps. But getting quite close to your friendly caps is excellent. Especially I got a bunch of friendly ships in front of me, so I got all the scouting I need. Uh, there, there can be no surprise to I'm able to angle against all the incoming targets. This is an excellent position. I can deal damage, I can project presence, and uh, I can be a massive pain in their ass, and I can deal a lot of damage to everyone. And whenever they try to sail, because I'm in a central position, the most important thing when you position yourself in the center of the map is that the team is trying to go to either side to sail from to either side of the map from their spawn, they have to expose broadside to you. That's the only way they can get. If they spawn in the middle of the map and they try to go to east or to west and you're in the middle as well, they have to expose broadside in order to get there. And we saw this with the Nagata, we saw this with the Bismarck. And now we see another great example, this North Carolina. He's, he's spawned at the middle as well and he's trying to sail to the other side. And the only way he can get there is by exposing broadside to me. And of course, since I run the concealment build, which I highly recommend on battleships, uh, I'm able to open up fire from stealth. So this poor NC, just trying to make it to, to the edge, uh, of the map, he, he doesn't really have much reaction time, I get spotted now, and he would have to start turning extremely sharply to be able to dodge it, but it's already too late. And that was a, a massive amount of damage, and that really highlights why I enjoy the NC as a ship, because um, if you misplay in this ship, you get punished so heavily. Look at that guy, he, he was full HP when it started, yes he's a stock ship, but this second small note that you can't really do this with other battleships. You see how I'm arcing the shells over the island. Other battleships don't really get away with it, but the NC is capable of arcing shells so well that you can easily nail people behind islands, like in this case. So that enemy NC got killed in two volleys of mine. It's four minutes into the game, the enemy tier 8 battleship has already been taken out. That's how quickly it can go. In, especially in the North Carolina. This thing is very vulnerable if you get broadsides, but when you're angled, it's very tanky. And that's exactly the way uh, I think a battleship should be. I know the Fuso is behind the island, I know I can sh see him, so I'm actually using the spotter plane not to increase my range, but just to be able to see his ship as I arc my shells over the island. And this ability to arc shells so so well in the NC is quite unique to all battleships in the game and it gives it so much more versatility because you can strike at foes from angles they don't expect like they do not see it coming they, they can they cannot in any way predict the shells will come there because well they think they're in cover and if I had been a Bismarck if I, have, I had been a variety of different ships there I wouldn't have been able to shoot the NC earlier and probably not the Fuso either because they were in cover but the NC 
it, the, the loss you get from having these very, very slow shells, you gain it back tenfold in the ability to just arc your shells over pretty much any cover. And of course, the incredible dispersion, and of course, the very, very consistent penetration, all adds to making the North Carolina a powerhouse in damage dealing. It is, however, the shells are slow, so of course, it requires practice. You need to know where to aim, you need to know how to predict, and so forth. Note that uh, I stopped on purpose and I started reversing. That's because there was an NC on the minimap on my right. We saw what happened to the NC earlier who gave me broadside. So of course we want to avoid making the same mistake. And here I glance to the far right and I zoom in. What was the purpose of that zoom in on the battleship? To see where his guns were pointed. Because when, whenever between every volley that you fire in North Carolina, I recommend you look at your minimap. You can see that my minimap is much larger than the default minimap. But that's because I think the default minimap is stupidly small and you barely can see the fucking thing it's it's completely pointless the first thing i recommend to new players is press the plus key on your numpad the first thing you do when you install the game and get, go into a game is pl press the plus key on the numpad as many times you can and maximize the size of the minimap you can see how large it is my, my minimap is probably like four times larger than the average minimap and that's because it gives you so much information and you can use it to constantly see where which way your broadside is pointed and in fact that's something i focus on more i focus on more than which way i'm sailing is which way is my broadside pointed because that's the angle i will get killed from that's the angle that will punish me. So when I stopped there, it, I made sure to not uh, give broadside to the NC. And when I reversed behind the cover, I made sure to zoom in on the Nagato to see that his guns weren't pointed my way either. Like, if, every time you shoot, you get an idea of what's going on around you. But what you need to be looking at the minimap is not the stuff you can see in front of you, but what you can see on the minimap. And one of the best ways to improve as a battleship player. One of the absolute best ways to improve as a battleship player is after every time you fire, in this downtime here, you look at the minimap. If, try to build a habit out of it. Between every volley you shoot, you look down on the right on the minimap. Things to pay attention to. Where are the enemy ships? Where are your friendly ships? And where are you in rel relation to them? In fact, when I look at the minimap, the first thing I look at is enemy locations, especially closest ones to me. And then friendly locations, especially closest ones to me. Try to make a habit of glancing at these things repeatedly. Every time you fire a volley, try to glance at these things and pay attention to them. Because map awareness is the key to becoming a good battleship player. Because battleships are, well, kind of clumsy and not too good of a stealth. There are, of course, exceptions like an ex extremely branded conquer. But in general, um, you need to pay attention to your positioning a lot to be able to utilize the tankiness of the ship. Now here's an important thing, you know that I shot where the Cleveland would be sailing if he went in a straight line. And this was a bit of a long range probing shot to get an idea. And what we saw was that the Cleveland turned to the right to avoid my shells. Why is this such an important thing? Because now we know that one, the Cleveland is paying attention to incoming shells and will actively dodge. Two, he likes dodging inwards as he's pushing with his Cleveland. That is two important things we learned from that next volley. So how can we use this information? Well first, I'm trying to avoid shooting so I can maybe get the cap. But seeing as he did manage to shoot me while I, while I was spotted, we instead return fire. I intentionally aim lower than I would normally, because I know that he likes to dodge in. So this time when he tries to repeat the same pattern of turning into the shells and dodging, Instead of dodging my shells, he actually sails his ship right underneath them. And this is something you can use a lot, especially against cruiser players. They tend to build these habits of how they dodge. Once again, now we know he likes to dodge incoming fire. We know he's going to evade, so we know there's no point shooting where he's going. Instead, we adjust our crosshair and we shoot higher, because now we know he's probably going to dodge away. So this time when he turns away to dodge, he once again turns underneath our shells. So those were two volleys that... Had he sailed in straight lines, would probably not have dealt much damage at all. But because our first volley was used to establish what kind of nature the enemy had, we could use that against him in the following two volleys. And that is extremely important when you're shooting cruisers, especially at long ranges, especially in the North Carolina, because the North Carolina, as we, I mentioned multiple times, has extremely slow shell travel speed. So that means it gives cruisers plenty of time to react. So if you want to kill good cruiser players, cruiser players that actively avoid your shells, then you have to predict what they're moving. You have to see what they're about to do, and you instead have to adjust your aim accordingly. And you could see that, in, that was in my opinion a very good example of how 
simply reading the opponent based on the first volley can allow you to deal significant damage with the following volleys. Now, I am sitting in the cap. I know there's a DD very close. I know there's a chance of me eating torps, but at the moment, 500 points for the enemy. We have no caps. We need to get this cap. I figured if I managed to get this cap and ate the torpedo, it would be an okay trade, but someone shot me literally 0.7 seconds before I could secure the cap, so I did not get the cap and the torpedo hit me. And this is going to force me to move. Not because um, I'm too afraid of the actual kill pressure that they have on me right now, but I'm more, af more afraid of the potential uh, of being hit with a flooding or a fire while my damage cone is on cooldown. And that's also something you need to learn as a battleship. You are very strong and you can be very offensive while you have your repair available. When you're able to heal any unexpected torp, any unlucky double fire or whatever, when you have the ability to deal with that, you are extremely strong. If you don't, you should retreat. You should play it extremely safe. Because these are the times when you are at your most vulnerable as a battleship and these are the times you can tend to get killed. My Oka pops up, we take a few seconds to make sure our aim is perfect, no point taking a hasty shot when we know he can't get into cover, so we make sure we get the perfect volley, and in fact the first uh, shell that hits him is a citadel. And now we start sailing away, but I kind of want to push back in, because well, we're still down multiple ships, and no one else is pushing for the cap, so I'm starting to feel I might have to stay here and contest. I also kind of want to turn my guns to shoot the Bismarck, who's behind the island. At these ranges, of course, the NC absolutely demolishes the Bismarck, thanks to better accuracy. But here's something important happens. You saw the cap. The cap flipped. So I start instantly turn hard right into the cap. And that, that turn play pays off, because the cap is very small. And by entering the cap, this DD let me know that he was in fact going for it. So that gave me all the positional information I needed to instantly turn in and close the small distance between us. He was being a bit too greedy, he was sitting very close to his detection range. And the problem with doing that is, while it enhances your ability to land, tor land torpedoes because you're so close to the target, um, if the battleship does unexpected maneuvers, like I did there, um, you catch them off guard. And of course, since I knew the DD was there, uh, I instantly turned completely in to dodge any incoming torpedoes. If you know there's a DD around, and you know he's probably, he's probably targeting you, you of course want to make uh, big changes to course or speed or whatever. Now, we still need this cap desperately. The enemy still has two caps, we have no caps. But the problem is, I do not see this position as sustainable. The problem is, while I could probably thank this lander for ages, there's another DD around, he's most likely with the lander, I would assume he's on that flank as well, but I don't really know, so this lack of information makes him extremely dangerous. Second of all, the Bismarck is pushing, and the closer the Bismarck gets, the bigger threat he becomes. I mentioned multiple times that the NC is not that good of a brawler, simply because, well, no turtle back, and it really can't deal with it at the same time. So while the Bismarck was still behind the island, I made the decision to turn away, and uh, angle away from him before he could get my broadside. And I'm glad I did it because, as you, can, as you can see on our right, there were incoming torpedoes coming my way. So if I had kept pushing, I would have pushed into a crossfire of a Leander, torpedoes and a Bismarck on one flank. Meanwhile, of course, I am using my smoke firing trick, trying to nail this Leander in the smoke, but I'm not really being too successful with this, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, I guess RNG really doesn't want to favor me. In fact, I'm willing, I was willing to take one additional shot, even though I could have turned uh, away from the torps much quicker and played it much safer. I was willing to take one additional shot, merely in the hopes of killing him. And that's because I gambled that eating one torpedo uh, for the potential trade of killing the lander would well be worth it. Because we need the kill. We need to be able to get something done. And you can see how quickly, by the way, the NC next to me is melting. And that's because he's pushing into that crossfire I just said you shouldn't push into. Um, he is being, he's in secondary range of the Bismarck, he's giving broadside to the Bismarck, and uh, it, it's, you cannot put yourself into those positions in the NC. The NC is strong when it can maintain its angles. Another note here, you note that I'm aiming a bit higher. I'm not actually aiming for the belt armor, and that's because battleships have exceptionally strong belt armor, and the Bismarck is no exception. And it also has a very strong bow that can bounce our shells if we try to shoot him nose in. So we need to adjust our aim accordingly. 
every battleship has one squishy weakness, and that is the superstructure. So what we do is we aim. Well, now he's giving enough broadside. You note that I'm not aiming at his waterline. I'm still aiming slightly above the waterline. That's of course because the Bismarck has turtleback, which means we cannot citadel him. Which means there's no point risking uh, waterline shots where in which probably many of the shots will land into the water and not deal any damage at all. There's no point risking those shots when we cannot get rewarded with a citadel. So we aim slightly higher to increase our chances of landing multiple shells. But returning to the back, uh, to, back to this uh, demonstration, every battleship has a weakness and you can see it now when we aim quite high above his nose. The shells land on his squishy superstructure. And that was a heavily angled Bismarck and he ate 5 full penetrations and 1 aura pen, 10k, 10k health gone. So even these extremely tanky battleships like the Bismarck, when they angle like this, as long as you adjust your aim, you elevate it slightly to make sure that you hit that squishy superstructure, you can deal a very, very heavy damage. Of course, you can get unlucky as well, and in this case, Dispersion decides, well, instead of landing on his superstructure, most of the shells are just going to land around him. But that happens to all battleships, and... That's just random, that's just RNG and you can't really affect that. But what you can do is make sure that you don't attempt to go for his nose. Because that's what he wants. Shooting at his nose right now would be a bunch of pens. Unless of course he gives me enough broadside to justify it. And it looks like he is giving enough broadside, but I'm still aiming quite high. You note that I'm aiming for his upper belt, because uh, I don't want to hit the belt which can bounce my shells. I want to hit that upper part of the broadside where I will get those juicy pens. And a pretty big 14k volley means that he's most li likely dead and I can start focusing on the New Orleans. Important is New Orleans has excellent stealth and one versus one on the New Orleans I can easily defeat him. Uh, he opened up fire with the hopes that the Bismarck would be able to tank longer and he would be able to deal damage freer for, for, for some time. However that did not become true and as long as I spot him he knows that if he tries to turn away and give full broadside he will probably die. So I need to rush him and close the distance. I signal my Bismarck that he needs to push the cap because we need both the kills and we need the cap and I'm in the optimal position to go for the kills whereas the Bismarck with the Hydra is in the optimal position to go for the cap against the DED. I do get undetected but that's okay I'm gonna keep rushing this New Orleans because I know he wants to turn away. The reason why he stopped firing and got undetected is because he wants to flee and I do not want to allow him this. A cruisers that overextend they will always want to disengage and you should try to punish them. You can even hold your fire long enough until you get this situation where as you can see he is trying to turn away. He wants to flee and we catch him uh, before he gets away. And the volley not really that impressive but uh, we have him within range, we have him within vi vision, and the uh, NC is pretty fast. So it's going to take him so long to get out of vision that he actually sh starts firing back, which is perfectly fine for us, um, provide because I can easily take him down. The problem is I need a Bismarck to go for the cap, and I keep pinging him. You might have noticed I pinged a lot of my friendly battleships this game, trying to tell them what to do, and they have pretty much never done what I've requested. In this case the Bismarck has to go for the cap because the enemy has 930 points and it doesn't matter if I kill this guy if we don't have the cap to delay them and start gaining some of our own points this is a guaranteed loss also he needs to work on securing the DD kill. The New Orleans just keeps angling, kiting, buying time. He should probably stop firing and just try to flee but it doesn't matter. I catch him doing a pretty wide turn, which is of course a death sentence to any cruiser, and I turn in hard right, because I expect there to be torps coming from the right flank, because I've been sailing in a straight line for a long time. Also, we need to start going for the cap. And at this point, you can see in chat, I do get finally frustrated enough to say weakened Russians, because these guys literally, it, it, it's kind of felt like I haven't just been fighting the enemy team, I've kind of been fighting my own team as well. Uh, the Bismarck, instead of pushing the cap, and contesting, fighting the DD and contesting the cap and giving us some sort of chance, decided to sail after me like a lost puppy. And of course, the enemy sh enemy ships know that all they need to do is run away now. They have 900, 900 points, 990. So all they need to do is flee, and we will in fact lose the game. So, uh, I mean, a pretty frustrating loss in that sense. Um, the credits is of course nice, or 1 million with a silver ship is always satisfying considering the only mission, I only had one mission that gave me 100k, so it would still have been 900k credits for a defeat. Confederate, uh, 
Confederate high caliber Kraken of course means a lot of damage dealt, Dreadnought means even though I still had one heal left, it kind of shows just how efficient I was about maintaining or managing my heals. I still had about well over 20k health and one whole heal left, but I had still tanked 120% of my own health pool. So good, I would say pretty optimal health usage even though I ended up eating two torpedoes this game, but both times those torpedoes were neither unexpected or in in that sense uh, they were all the times i ate the torps i was always attempting to get a trade i was attempting to get a kill on the lander or i was attempting to secure the cap so they were fairly calculated torps in that sense and not just sailing a straight line and accidentally eat them damage of course 255k bit of a crushing loss in fact if we look at detailed report uh, 1.8k base XP on a loss is of course always quite sad. So how do that run around capping everything, top their scoreboard, and my team on the other hand, well, yeah, my team on the other hand kind of failed to pull uh, their weight this game. Looking at detailed report, well, this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, damage received, 89k, which as I said is pretty good considering we still had a lot of health and healing left. Uh, potential damage, 2.3 million. So that's how much firepower they extended my way. And I feel like that also kind of shows just how incredibly tanky the North Carolina is. As long as you maintain your angles, as long as you maintain your positioning, and you don't give up any free broadsides, you can tank 2.3 million worth of potential damage and still have plenty of health left still. Like this game, I could easily have worked all the way up to 3 million potential this game if there just had been enough opponents and time to do so. And of course, the AP, I'm very consistent on the NC, 94 hits, 250 uh, 4k damage, and then a whole 600 damage from the secondary. So the ship is excellent, the ship is fantastic, but uh, sadly you can't pick and choose your teammates, so you cannot always uh, win them all. And of course, uh, finally we have the rewards, which is, or well, credits and XP. As you can see, there was a combat mission that gave me 100k, and then of course I have, I'm running a bunch of flags and stuff that further enhanced my income, but overall it still shows you that, uh, well, if you got some flags and camos going on your ships, you can make a tidy profit while leveling your ships as well, even if you happen to lose the game, as I happened here. Anyway, that was my NC commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.